every day you live, you're that closer to the grave. This morning, I want to ask you the question, are you really ready for death? In one year, on average, 50 million people will die. That every day you live, you're that closer to the grave. The question is, are you prepared for death? Allah in the Quran mentions about gambling. Yes, they ask you about intoxicants and gambling. I don't care if you are seven, eight, nine years old, or 20 years old, or 100 years old. Don't gamble. I want you to consider this ayat from the Quran. Ya ayyuhalladhina aminu taqu Allah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun. Oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared and do not die except as a Muslim. Let me tell you the problem that you have as young people. The problem that you have as young people is that you feel invincible. You feel that you're going to be here a long time. But I can tell you, brothers and sisters, don't gamble. A lot of you think like this. I'm young, I'm 19, I'm 20, I'm 21. I can have my fun now. I have a lot of time. I get older. I can start making my prayer. I can wear my hijab. I can I start going to the masjid. I can start reading the Quran. I have plenty of time. And, and let me have my fun now. Imam Siraj, after all, you were young. You had your fun. Why can't we have our fun? Because you can't gamble. Last year, my daughter, Basma Wahaj, died at the young age of just short of her 20th birthday. Did it hurt me? Yes. The greatest gift to me, that daughter, a good Muslim. But yet, I am reminded in the Quran, Glory be to him in whose hands is the dominions of the heavens and the earth. And he, Allah, created death and life to test you who's best in conduct. So the purpose of life is to be tested by Allah and death to be tested by Allah. You, if you live long enough, will lose a loved one. So the real question is not to get angry or the real point is not to get angry at Allah because Allah took your loved one. Recognize. No soul can die except by the permission of Allah. It's already written in a book. I have nothing to do with that. We try our best to live the best life that we can live. Eat good food. Stay away from the haram. But even if you eat the most healthy of food, you exercise and you, and you run and you jog and you do all of that. Yet, there's no guarantee that your life would be extended. We're here but by grace of Allah. And I want to thank Allah for every day that He's given to me. If Allah gave you 20 years, thank Him for that. Don't expect to get more than that. Don't expect to have another day. If you have the attitude that this is your last day, then the person who has the attitude and the knowledge that it's their last day is different from a person who believes they'll be here for a long time. Make plans as if you will be here forever. Make plans to go to college. Make plans to study your career. My daughter was studying to become a doctor. She just was short of a graduation. In fact, her mother and myself was invited to the graduation and they gave her a degree. But all of those years are not wasted, not as a Muslim. Because everything you do for the pleasure of Allah, you get reward for Allah. And if in the back of your mind, you want to be a doctor for the Muslims, to aid the Muslims, or to be a lawyer to help the Muslims, good, plan it. But if Allah takes your life, take the life of someone that you love, be careful that you don't say anything at the displeasure of Allah the Almighty. So brothers and sisters, my first message, don't gamble. There's no guarantee that any of us will get back home from this conference and this convention. Don't gamble. Number two, if you make a mistake and if you commit a sin, then ask Allah's forgiveness immediately and follow up a bad deed with a good deed, it will wipe it out. Number three, the real question is, how prepared are you for death? If it came tomorrow, someone asked the Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Meta when is the hour of judgment? And the Prophet could have answered, Only Allah knows. Allahu Alam. And that would be the right answer. But the Prophet chose in this instance, 
to answer another way. He said, What did you prepare for it? Are you prepared for death? Why is death important? Because death is that defining moment when something happens. إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ أَمَالَهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ said the Messenger of Allah, because when a person dies, his works is cut off. The beautiful thing about you, no matter what we're doing, we don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter what we're doing, and everything we do is defined by Allah. Are you prepared for death? How many intend to move in the future? How many intend to buy a house? Isn't that something? You plan to buy a house, this is good. But guess what? What about that house that all of us will live in? in the neighborhood called the graveyard. How many thought about that house? Since you will die, and it is inevitable that you'll die, and no one has escaped death, and since the last 20 years, one billion people have died, and since 50 million people die a year, and since three people die every two seconds, then why not prepare for the next home before the hereafter? And that is the grave. The blessing that you have right now in my conclusion is that every one of you, I don't care whatever the level of your practice, the great gift that you have right now is the gift of life and a chance and a hope. Because brothers and sisters, when that moment comes, the moment of death, we cannot delay it. And we would wish every one of us to get more time to do what? To do more work. And we would be so happy. And we would remember every morning we got up to make Fajr prayer. Every day we fasted for Allah. We will remember that. Everything that we did for Allah. Every time we stayed away from the haram. When you were tested, young brothers, in school. And you were in school and you were tested by drugs and tested by women as Prophet Yusuf was tested by a woman. And every time you stayed away from it, you refrained from it, you will be happy because you get a reward and a blessing from Allah. Don't gamble and think about the hereafter. I close with this, and so the Prophet asks the question, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did you prepare for death? Soon, someone will be carrying you. Look at you this morning, you got up, you washed yourself, had a shower, you took that for granted. Soon, you won't be able to wash your own self. Somebody, some Muslim has to wash your body and carry your body. How many people do you think will attend your janazah? It's an important question. Two people? Five people? A hundred people? Because the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said that anyone who a hundred people attend their janazah praying for the intercession, asking for Allah's forgiveness, Allah will accept their intercession. How many people would attend your janazah, your funeral? Are you prepared for death? How to be prepared for death? Only one way. Don't gamble. Live the best life you can live. Because think about it. Your mother, your father, your brothers, sisters, your cousins, your friends. They, if they're good Muslims, will go to the grave with you and then they will leave you there. And I don't care how much your mother and father loved you or your children loved you or your friends loved you or your imam loved you. They will leave you down there in that grave and they will walk away and you will hear their footsteps as they walk away and you'll be in there by yourself. Are you prepared for that? Well, the best way to be prepared for that, for death, is to live life the best way you can. You may not realize this, but the people of America right now are waiting for you. If justice is to come to this country and in the world, it will have to come from you. You, the future of Islam, if Allah spares your life and you're around for another 20 years, there's 20 more years of good that you can be doing. Be happy to know, alhamdulillah, that you are servants of Allah and try to live every day from prayer to prayer. And remember the word of Aisha radiallahu anha about the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kana Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yathkurullah ala kuli ahyani. And the Messenger of Allah remembered Allah in every circumstances. May Allah bless you.